Hey everybody, welcome to Questions on Tap, where we drink whiskey and talk about, well, just about anything. I'm Mark. And I'm John, and let's get right into this. So today, we're going to talk about what is commonly referred to as the teletransportation paradox. And so for your reference, uh, I'll be referring to the Wikipedia definition of it, which we can link in our description and resources for this episode. So specifically, we're going to be going over Derek Parfit's version. Um, so that the, here's, the, here's the prompt. A machine puts you to sleep. It records your molecular composition, breaking you down into atoms, and relaying it into Mars at the speed of light. On Mars, another machine recreates you from local stores of carbon, hydrogen, and everything that it would need, each atom in exactly the same relative position. So Parfit poses the question of whether or not the teletransporter is actually a method of travel, meaning, is the person on Mars the same person who entered this teletransporter on Earth. Mind you, just for some qualifications, when you wake up on Mars, you would feel like being you, and you would remember entering it. So it would essentially have all of your memories and everything. It would be you, at least from the person's experience, you on a different planet. Yeah, I am, I'm excited to talk about this one, because I think on last episode when we were talking about the ship of Theseus, I wanted to kind of get in to talk about the human aspect of it. And I think this can kind of lay in a little bit Obviously not the same thing, but I think it's an interesting prompt. Um, so it's, it's, it's fascinating thinking about breaking somebody down by their atoms, rebuilding them. For me, personally, thinking about this. And kind of, I like to picture this as almost like a Star Trek thing, when yeah. they're kind of being beamed up, essentially. Yeah. You know, I'm more of a Star Wars fan myself, but I, can, I still know Star Trek. I, to me, it kind of seems like they're just killing the person and then remaking them somewhere else. That's my just immediate gut reaction. John, what do you kind of feel about it? So I think it's really interesting because, again, this kind of continues on that Theseus line of thought is personhood or identity mm -hmm. in a sense of, like, is that philosophical idea of identity and personhood carried over? And I think people will be surprised to hear, I think it is the same person. See, I don't, that to me doesn't, just doesn't surprise me. Um, cause I feel like with what's different from the ship of Theseus is that this person has their own consciousness, their own thoughts, that their identity is given to them by themselves. Whereas if you didn't listen to the ship of Theseus episode, a lot of some of the arguments were about the identity of that ship being given by its creator, which is different than if I wake up on a different planet, I still feel like me. Yes. I, I and just... I think... As, as we talk about this, there's an interesting modified version of this problem, which I think we'll get to in this episode. Oh, because definitely. Because it, like, throws it into a loop. But, yeah, I think, similarly, yeah, you... Because it's not... Again, it's not like it's taking pieces of your body and reassembling it. It's literally, like, decomposing you down to the smallest bits and then recomposing almost of the but, same bits again. But at the same time, it's also deassembling you. It's taking you apart because at the end of the day, once it kind of scans your body atom by atom, at some point it's going to have to make that said body disappear or just stop from existence. So I think it is kind of taking you down and deconstructing who you are. Well, actually, maybe I want to rephrase my position because now that I'm thinking about this question more, it's not like it's the same atoms, right? No, it's, it's not. It's breaking it down. And so it's like, I think a way, for, for, the listener, for you listeners, I think the way to think about this is that it's like if it broke us down into, like, numbers and data. Yeah, it's definitely like a data, there's code that goes to each of our atoms, is how I'm looking at it. And then it just takes new atoms and tries to, and for this question, succeeds at identically matching that data. Actually, I think I might change my answer. Ooh, okay, I kind of like that. Where, what's the new frame of mind? No. No what? Well, oh, oh, that's so weird. I guess... I, I'm sorry for listening. I know the past two episodes, I, like we've generally been more defined. But it's so weird because the thing about it is that if you're composed by completely new atoms, your entire physical being is different. Like yes. this isn't the ship of Theseus where it's just the old parts being re like it's you're not replacing the old parts into something new gradually over time. It's immediately you are deconstructed and killed, and then re essentially a clone of you is made. This is yeah. a question: Is a clone that has your memories the same person? But what's interesting, compare if you take that frame of mind now, I feel like when you were talking about the ship of Theseus, you were saying that 
if the same, like if the ship that ends the journey is that said ship. So I feel like as long as you embody that person and feel as though you were that same person that you were who stepped into like the module on Earth, why wouldn't you be on Mars? Well, and I think this is the reason why I'm going to say I think I'm changing my answer to no, it's not, is really because of the follow-up question, which is let's say it doesn't deconstruct and reconstruct. Mm. Let's say it just copies that data and makes a copy replica of you. Which I think is a very natural, yeah, that's a very natural progression. And I feel like this just kind of jumps into the idea of like cloning somebody, how that works. Are they actually the same? And yeah, I mean, to me, whether it's you're cloning somebody, whether you're transporting their data to Mars, to me, that's not the same person. You know, you can, it's weird because I feel like the consciousness of that person would feel as if they're the same person. But to me, the identity, kind of as we were talking about in the past, the identity of that person wouldn't be the same. It has to be destroyed in one place. I don't think you can transport somebody's data across, you know, from Earth to Mars. Well, then also because if you think about it, the, the ship thesis, we talked a lot about personhood, that the ship has an identity in a sense. Well, with I think people, you thought that. I thought that. So, but, like, with the person, you can think of it as a soul, a psyche, however you want to refer to mm. it. So, essentially, when we say personhood, we're talking about this, this existence of self that's separate from the physical realm. And so, in a, I would call it, personally, I would say that we all have souls. And so, can we, but I would also say, just from my religious background, that, like, the souls are intricately, in my opinion, connected to our body. I'm not someone who says... The soul is the exclusive proponent of who we are, and you could put the soul, like, you separate, like, it's not like the body is just here to be, like, a robot that is just a vessel for our existence. Yeah, yeah, I know from past conversations that you feel like the soul is, you know, intertwined with every part of you. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, again, future conversations, what does that mean after death and things like that? Like, I think that's a separate convo. But the point of the matter is, is that when we deconstruct the body and reconstruct it, even if they have the same memories and everything, do they have the same soul? Or do they have a soul at all? Okay, now this is really interesting because I feel like we both started on two different sides and you kind of moved over a little bit to my side. I might jump back to the side you were originally on because when I look at like the soul, for example, which we'll get more in depth in a later episode for sure, but I don't know if there is such thing as like a deeper soul because to me, the brain is just a lot of electrical signals between neurons. Like that to me can define somebody enough. I, I don't think, like for me, I think it, I think I could be described as the specific electrical signals within my body when the neurons firing in my brain. So maybe to me, it is the same person then because if it's simply code, if it's simply data and electrical signals, which can be sent, maybe it is the same person then. I might be switching my viewpoint. Well, because I, and I think I'm going to stay here and say it's, I think it's not because again, unless there's a way to transfer that soul over to the new person, that when you actually kill that original version, you are killing the person and the soul, and you are just transferring the memories over. Yeah, so, because I don't, I don't think if there was like a, a soul to a person that you could transmit that to another person or another, another, another being, no. Yeah, or another like set of atoms, for lack of a better description. Yeah, and like... And just for context for the listener, like I come from a Christian background, the idea is that you know we have a, we have a soul and a body, and they're intricately mm-hmm. connected. When we die, um, like when you die, and people say they go to heaven and stuff like that, for that moment, your soul is separate from your body and is existing in this realm that's different. But the end of all ages, when like everything comes together and everything, the idea is that your soul it's not given a new body, like a completely brand new one. It's reconnected to the new to the same one that's been restored and so in christian theology again there's this really important idea about that interconnectedness and so i think because like i confess that and that is how i see beings and personhood Mm -hmm. i can't confess that and say that at the end of time that i believe in a restoration that 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 same connection is really important 
Yeah. I can't confess that and also say that if we were to just reconstruct me with new atoms identically match a clone, that if I were to make yeah. a clone of myself and just port my memories over, there's really no way for my soul to attach to that. Yeah. Or no, maybe think... there is. Again, I'm not I'm not the big guy who makes these decisions. But from my limited understanding and yeah. our limited understanding of how these things work. I question, I guess I shouldn't say we can't, I question whether or not that really works yeah. that way. Oh, totally. I mean, I don't feel like either of us are actually making, you know, we totally know statements. It's all just wondering, but yeah. I do from like my understanding of like what a soul is when that person steps into like the capsule or module that you know, copies their atoms and then sends them to Mars and destroys that person. We don't know what happens to like that person who stepped into the module on earth. Like, we don't know what their experience is as they're being like taken down or deconstructed, you know? They could, in like the kind of religious background, they could go to heaven, they could. We don't know kind of what happens to their being or their mind. So I think that's a really interesting kind of take on it. And I, I think you kind of know how to put together your own thoughts enough because I agree, if you do think that there is a soul attached to the body in some deep way, then you can't separate that by just transporting their data and atoms to Mars. Well, because then my other thing is, is that if this question was different and it, was, it wasn't it was taking new atoms and reconstructing a person, it was you're sending, like physically sending the okay, old atoms yeah. through a cannon, I would say 100%, <laughs> like at light speed or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's say. And, and then you just poof and you reconstruct and it's the same exact atoms. I would say yes. Yes, no, you're I, doing that. I would, because... I would agree with that, too. I think I would agree with that. Because if you send atoms over... I mean, it's similar. Like, if you get, like, a finger chopped off and you reattach that finger... Granted, it's a larger scale. But we'd still say that finger is you. That's, like, your original finger. I don't think that would change depending on how much you break those atoms down. You know? Yeah, but if you just deconstruct them and then let... That's no different than disintegrating, in a sense. Like if someone, like if I just, that's that is no, true. Yeah. That's no different than like sticking. That's no different than like burning me in a sense. And like just letting that go on forever. And then eventually like I'll burn to ash. Well, I guess. In what Obviously it's, I guess what I mean is that like, if I'm just deconstructing all my atoms, copying the information and then just leaving the atoms to die or to die is the wrong yeah, word, but yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But you know no, what I mean? Like, yeah. At the end of the day, yeah, that's how someone podcast. could think about it. Um, <laughs> but like, if, that, if we're just leaving the atoms to quote unquote die, then yeah, then you're then you're dead. Yeah, right. Like, I would think that if you step into that capsule, like if I like, I'm trying to picture myself in that situation. If I step into that, being prepared to get shot to Mars, I mentally am like, my body right now, I'm going to die. That's kind of how I think I'm looking at it. That it's not. I'm, like, going to just go to sleep and wake up on Mars. No, my body's dying on Earth and almost, like, coming back to life on Mars or, like, being cloned on Mars. But here's, the, but here's the other question. So let's say that... Okay, so what, let me pre preload this with some stuff. So in the medical field, if my heart stops, I'm pronounced dead, right? I think so. And so in my head, I'm like, yeah, that's why. Like, if my heart stops, yeah, I'm dead. And so when I did, when I, certainly when I break myself down into atoms, my heart stops. And so I, I would, must, I would assume so. I die in there. Here's a question. Okay. Is sending the, is relaying the information over and reconstructing it? Again, we're not ignoring the clone. Like, let this, we're assuming that this is the first version of the question and the first version yeah, of you yeah. guys. Is that the equivalent of restarting the heart? So like if my heart stops and then someone comes with defibrillators, and starts it back up again. Yeah. We would say that's the same person. Right? Yeah, I think the difference with that though is that it's the same heart and the same atoms and the well, same it's everything. The, the brain, like if you're like pumping the heart, like CPR, if someone's heart yeah. stops, you pump their heart to like have blood throw th flow through their body and through their brain, their brain doesn't stop working. I don't think. Again, not science, I, there's some Actually, wall, I think it but I, does it. I don't well, know. no, but I know being brain dead is different. If you're brain dead, yeah, that's different. That's yeah. the whole where like you have to decide on like pulling the person's plug or like kind of yeah. in that aspect. So I think to me, it's more of like, does the brain stop working? If like the brain does, then that kind of 
shuts off who that person is because if someone's brain dead we don't like that person a lot of people would think is is gone you know their body's there but the person that makes them is gone so i look at it more of in the brain stopping aspect instead of the heart stopping if See, i think sense. i think this is where you and i might differ again this is probably a separate episode but like if someone's brain dead i would say the soul is still in the body and so the person's still there, whether or not the brain's working. See, what's going to be really interesting about this podcast is you guys will quickly discover, all the listeners, that we disagree on a lot of aspects of everything. <laughs> like, fundamental building blocks of, like, what makes a person a person. Again, ranging from the universe and how it exists to, like, mm-hmm. what does it just mean to exist in the universe? Yeah. <laughs> like, which I think is great, because we can still talk about it. And, it's like, I, I, yeah, like, I get it, and I get that that... So you're saying that if the brain stops and the heart is still pumping, right? That so someone like a, a patient is who is declared brain dead, yes, but is yes. like on a ventilator or whatever, like te- mm-hmm. medical technology is used to like keep yeah. them alive. Yes, I am saying that they are still alive and that the personhood is still there. Yes. Oh, see, that just brings me to so many other questions. I'm not going to ask them right now because I feel like that just again we could talk for way too bit, long yeah. about that, but. That, that's an interesting that's an interesting proposition, and that will be definitely a later episode. Um, Maybe the next so now kind of, I'm going to like pivot to that second question that we posed here, because I feel like we're at a little bit of a disagreement, but also agreeing to disagree on the first question. So what if we bring in the clones? If you were to clone yourself, like right now. Or replica. I think it uses a yeah. infinite replica, but yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you personally, I guess, view that other version of you? What, uh, explain what you mean by, like, what do you mean by view? Oh, I'm just looking, like, what are your thoughts on that? Sure, sure. Replica. Um, for the listeners out there, I am very anti-cloning. Okay. Like, about as far I am against cloning in any and all circumstances. Cloning of all species. Cloning of all species. Okay. I'm very against it. Um. Why? That's a natural question. That's a separate conversation. Well... Maybe it's not. I think it is... I I guess my short answer to the question, unless you really want to dive deep into it, is that I think it's humanity playing God, and it's messing with things we don't understand. Okay, no, that checks out. That's my short-form answer. And And we can keep it at that, I think, for now. And my generic answer I'd give to people, but there's more explanation behind that if we want to discuss that. Oh, there usually is. Um, But because of that, though, because I think cloning... I don't... that cloned replica is not just because there's i think there's a really there's well there's a spectrum of ways to think about it but let's like break it down into some like cases yeah um yeah. there's the case where we're both me right like if i'm cloned okay. that's yeah. one way of seeing it that they're both equally me yeah definitely there's the next case which is they're different people that share the same memories but different people in yeah. a sense both their own individuals and experience that can develop differently which i think you know you see that in tv shows where cloning exists like the fact and i that... love i love the idea of nature versus nurture so i'm yeah. so down to talk about that more later as well yeah yeah and so but exactly so like in star wars i'm also a huge star wars fan so like the clones all exist but if you watch the clone wars tv show yeah each of the clone has different personalities not because their genetics are different, but because their experience is different. And that Definitely. changes them. And I, well, I guess it's just there are some clones whose genetics are slightly different. But again, to keep it simple, that they develop over time without nerding out too much. It's not a Star Wars podcast, unfortunately. Um, so there's that case, though. And where they're both individual people. Mm-hmm. And then there's a third case, which is the original version is the person and the other one's not a person at all. And the fourth per- version of it is the clone is the person and the original person's no longer the original. Like, Yeah, I mean, I could, I guess I could those see are four. Argument. Those are the four distinct cases, I would say, that kind of encompass a spectrum of ideas of how yeah. they relate and stuff. See, what's interesting about that is I could see an argument for, like, I think all of those. To me, the hardest one to argue would be for the fourth option, where the clone is the real person. Like yeah, because I don't think that makes sense. And, yeah, to me that's way. difficult. Um, I would agree. I think because we've never, at least from my understanding, we've never really fully cloned a, a human. 
We definitely have not a human. I I feel like I've seen things online of we've like cloned a sheep, sheep before. Want, yeah, yeah right? we've cloned okay. a sheep. Um, because my qu I don't know. I'm stuck somewhere between the two different people and the third option. Because my qu again, I believe that what makes humanity separate and different from like a cat is the idea of having a rational soul. Yeah, that we have a rational soul. I, I think, and I hypothesize, I wouldn't make this claim academically, but, like, I personally question, like, I think that animals might have something like a soul. Like, I think yeah, okay. each, it's not like cats are identical. Like, if we, like, if I have ident twins that are cats, yeah, they could still behave differently and have different personalities even from birth. And I think yeah. that's a sign that there's something different about them, even though their okay, genetics okay. are there. And so, like, I think that there's, I don't know what that means from a religious perspective, there's not much said about that, so I don't really comment on it very much. Um, but, so when it comes to the clone, though... You just like cats. You just wanted to talk about cats. For I you, but... always love talking I about cats. I respect that, yeah. But my point is, is that if we clone a human... We really don't know that without doing it. And I really don't not want to find all, out. No. And I don't want to find out. I but don't my, either. But my hypothesis... Is that the cloned person would be a human being without a soul okay and i mean so i think i think from the perspective what that means that I know... for whether or not they're a different person i don't i don't know how to articulate that but i wouldn't argue that they have a soul i guess i wouldn't say that we can know for sure if they do and i'm really nervous that they would be a person without a soul and so it's just a human being based off instinct in yeah no i think like that's we were an animal in a sense yeah because like i get i think from like, from what I know about, like, your perspective, I, I think it'd be hard to argue that that person has a soul, right? Just because I feel like that's kind of something that's, like, ingrained from the moment of, like, conception in, like, And it's, the like, Christian, given to In the you. typical, like, Christian theology. Yeah, from the I'm moment of wrong, conception. Like, yeah. in the Psalms, for, for, from in the womb, from the moment of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, whatever the sign is. I've no, so that makes sense. Kind of thing. And so... And for me, I feel like if... Like, from the second that it was cloned, like, in that instant, they'd be the same person. But kind of like you said... The experiences like make can shape you into who you are. So if they kind of go their separate ways and have totally different experiences, they would be like quote different people in terms of not their genetic makeup, but in terms of their thoughts, their feelings, how they view the world. They would be different. That's almost undeniable. Again, that's a strong claim, but still, I feel like that's hard to like argue against in that. And so I, yeah, it's a hard. It's hard to argue that they would be different or that they are the same, like, and they will always be the same, I guess. Because to me, it's, they're, again, at that moment, they're two different people kind of after that. Yeah, because if they're, if they're, let's, let's ignore the soul part of this. If there's, if yeah. it's just about memories and all and experiences and transferring those experiences over from the, from that initial moment, they're the same. Yeah. But yeah, like right it, at that moment, they're the same, but everything after that, I would assume would differentiate them. But then there's not. So there's, um, yeah, I think that I, this is really interesting. Yeah, this is where I, because I could kind of see it in both directions. And even now that I'm arguing that they're different, what I said earlier in the episode about like just being, if you're just neurons and you're just like electrical signals, by that they'd be the same. Which I think, no, I think that still stands because I'm saying at that moment they're the same, but your experiences can define you. But I don't know. I think it's one of those and stuff like that because your body yeah. responds. Because as each person, as each person in quotes is, it's like exposed to the environment. Their bodies will change, and mm -hmm. their brains will respond to things differently because of experience. And like there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of psychology to show that yeah. we respond differently because of experiences and traumas and stuff like that. And so yeah. this is a tough one. I definitely don't have like a solid. I'm a hundred percent sure it's one way. Whereas some things. I will full heartedly argue that way. So that's why I kind of like this. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. And I think it's interesting also how different the views of like identity are between this and like I said in the ship of Theseus in an, an inanimate object. Our views are totally different. And it's kind of cool to see. No, it is. And I also think it's fascinating because there's like the scientific answer and then there's the like the real answer not that the science answer is like a fake answer but mean that like yes they're the same person in 
everything measurable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're not in a way. Yeah. But I think the one thing is, is that like with identical twins, they're clearly different people. And so are clones any different than... Obviously, oh, we'd man. say they're, they're slightly different than I do. I don't know the science. This is a no, separate question, yeah. and this is a scientific question. I literally have no idea. But, like, what's the difference between... I think a clone would be different because identical yeah, I think twins would still be. have physiological differences and stuff yeah, like that. I think it would be different. And so, But it's almost, like, closer than identical twins. But you, I think you can see there's a parallel there. Yeah, And oh, so it's, definitely. like, really interesting. Yeah, and that's where it's like, I think you're describing like that scientific answer versus like kind of the gut feeling, which is what I was trying to get at when I asked you, like, how would you look at that person? Like, what's your gut reaction when you, if you could imagine like a clone of you standing next to you, like, how would you feel about that? Yeah, because there's the the experiential existence of being a human being in this world in reality. And that's where I don't think I could define that feeling at all. I'm trying to think about how I would view that. And I would have no idea where to start. It's fascinating. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is kind of a decent way to end the episode. Again, another episode ended on neither of us having really any 100% guaranteed answer. Because we both kind of shifted around a little bit just talking in this short 25, 30-minute episode. Yeah. No, I I really like this question. I'm going to be thinking about this for a little bit because... it. It definitely could be one that in the future we have like a longer episode to dive into all these subjects as well. Because yeah, it's, it's, I like it. I don't know. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to say like, I think there's, there's a lot of potential for us to change our minds and to talk about this more in the future or get into some of these concepts like souls and cloning and stuff like that. But uh, with that being said, this was questions on tap. If you liked the episode, you know? Watch, listen to another one. I don't know. Do what you got to do. <laughs> or check us out on Apple Podcasts. Leave a review. Let us know how you feel. Yeah, thanks for checking us out. This is Questions on Tap signing off. Have a good one.